April the 20th, 2008, standing out in front of the Higdon's place in San Diego, California. My wife Donna's going to see the surgeon tomorrow at Scripps Clinic here in San Diego, La Jolla, anyway. I uh, hope he's going to say she's doing well, and maybe another three weeks when he sees her again, he'll say, yep, she's doing good enough, you can head out of here, go back to Kansas, to Tahoe, wherever. Our daughter's convinced us that Tahoe's on the way to Kansas. It is, if you kind of stretch things a little bit. I want to uh, review, in my mind, and make a, a tape about that situation in Texas, where the Mormon children have been removed from that compound that is run by the maverick end of the Mormon religion. The Mormon church itself has outlawed the kind of thing that's going on there, multiple marriages and that sort of thing. But these mavericks have set up that compound and apparently have almost made slaves out of women and children, and particularly children. Women perhaps have a say-so, probably have a big say-so of whether or not they get involved in that, uh, the older women. But those youngsters that are born in there and apparently are being consigned to older men as wise, as sex slaves, whatever you want to say about it, they don't have much choice. And all the reports make pretty clear, I don't have the newspaper article with me now, I'd already made this and made it a little too long and it was rejected. But the newspaper makes pretty clear the articles I've read earlier and the stuff I've been watching on TV. Make per the reports make pretty clear that things aren't very healthy for these young people. So the state of Texas says they've got 400 and some children that they're going to do something with. And uh, one paper I was looking at said they were going to put them in to their child welfare program, their foster home program, and I shuddered. Now don't get me wrong, I know that sometimes foster programs are run by great people with great results. In fact, one of my favorite teachers at Somerton ran a foster home for three and four girls at a time for a number of years, did a great job. Those children, those women are her children. Their children are her grandchildren ideal situation. But I've had other foster kids made me shake my head. How bad could it have been where they were? Because it's pretty doggone bad where they are in the foster homes that I saw them in. And these overprotected, maybe, you say overprotected, nothing, maybe overabused, say it however you want to. These Mormon children coming out of that Texas compound, it better be handled carefully or the long range result isn't going to be good. Don't just put them in foster homes as such. Look for Mormon families that will adopt those children either as foster children or complete legal adoption. I've made clear because of other experiences with good, good Mormon people that Mormon people are some of the best people in the world. Of course, all Mormons aren't the same any more than all Baptists are the same, or Methodists, or Episcopalians, or you name your own choice, Jewish, Muslim, whatever. God loves us all, but he must have to work hard to love some of us some of the time, and maybe work real hard to love some of us any of the time. So I strongly feel that there's either enough Mormon families in the state of Texas to take those 400 plus children or reach outside of the state of Texas. This is a special circumstance. Don't put those kids out into non-Christian homes, into homes that they would have to say, you know, the compound was right. They've, we've been in, put in an evil situation. Get them in with good Mormon people so that they've got the faith still behind them and the transition can be reasonable and have a good chance of being successful. And if at all possible, 
somehow tie the mothers with the children as often as you can. It just makes sense. God have mercy on you that have to make the decisions. God have mercy on those children and on those mothers.